subscribe House of Commerce for more lectures. Today's lecture is about journal journal double entries and compound entries. In this chapter you'll learn what is journal journal, how the double entries are recorded, what are double entries, what are compound entries and how they are recorded. So stay tuned. Mostly students find it difficult that how a statement is qualified as a transaction and how to pass the entry and what a statement does qualify for an entry. So let us take a look. If the statement qualifies these three conditions simultaneously at the same time in the same statement, if three things are found, then it is said to be a transaction and you will pass the entry of the same. So on number one we have occurrence. Occurrence means happening of an event like sale, purchase, payment and receipt. If this thing is happening in this statement that you are selling something, you are purchasing something, you are paying something, you are receiving something, then the statement is said to be a transaction but the other two conditions should be found along with it on number second we have exchange exchange means something is taken or given in exchange of another thing as we have discussed in occurrence if you're selling something so obviously you're taking something against it then if you're purchasing something so you're taking something against that purchase in exchange of that purchase or if you're paying something so you're having something against it or you're availing some services and then if you're receiving something so you have given something to someone or you have given the services then the third one is monetary value that the statement carries some of the amount some of the value in terms of money like if you have purchased something or sold something or paid for something or receipt you have made then it should carry some value in terms of money like how much dollars or how much the currency was exchanged against that transaction let's take a look on an example purchased building for cash now this transaction qualifies all these three conditions written above means you are purchasing a building some event is happening like purchase then for cash you're purchasing the building there is exchange of cash against building and then monetary value that the building carries a value in terms of money rupees 90,000 so this statement had all three conditions in it and now it is said to be a transaction and you can pass the journal entry by it hope you have got the idea about criteria to qualify as transaction now let us take a look on general journal. General journal means the books of account where all types of transactions either on cash or on account or credit are recorded. Means this is the book where you record all types of transactions either they are on cash or the cash is to be paid in future means on account. So you can pass any sort of transaction if I am explaining journal journal here means that I am telling you that there are some other journals where you pass some specific transaction but in journal journal you can pass any sort of transaction containing the cash or you're receiving the cash in exchange of it or the cash is to be received in future two things namely debit and credit are those things which are added in the life of accounting students 
detail he learns or practically does the accounting so you have to learn about it carefully that it helps you till the end now what is debit and what is credit debit and credit are nothing but just two sides of journals debit means the left hand side and the credit means the right hand side of the journal now what is actually meant by both of these these both sides just shows the increase or decrease in the elements now let's take a look at how it shows increase or decrease in the elements and what elements if increased are recorded on the debit side and what elements are recorded on the credit side assets if it is increased it is recorded on the debit side and if the asset is decreased it is recorded on the credit side then expenses if expenses are increased these are recorded on debit side same as asset and if decreased these are recorded on the credit side as an asset then liabilities liabilities are different and they are recorded on the different side of assets and expenses like if they are increased they are recorded on the credit side and if they are decreased they are recorded on the debit side and so as the revenue revenue if increased it is recorded on credit side and if it is decreased it is recorded on debit side owner equity if it is increased it is recorded on credit side and if it is decreased it is recorded on debit side now these are the things which you have to memorize and these will help you in each and every single transaction of all the accounting system if you do not memorize it so you will find the difficulty in passing the journal journal entries double entries these type of entries involves two title of accounts now these title of accounts can be of similar element or different elements so let us take few examples number 1 purchased furniture for cash $10000 now in this transaction furniture is an asset and cash is also an asset so these two belong to the same element now as we have learned before that you are the accountant of business if furniture is being purchased it will be increased as an asset of the company so if the assets of the companies are being increased so you have learned that assets if increased shall be recorded on the debit side so the furniture shall be debited by $10000 then cash if being paid against the purchase of furniture so this is an asset and you have learned that assets if decreased it will be recorded on credit side so cash will be recorded in this entry one thing you have to keep in view while passing the entries that you are the accountant of business and not the owner means you have to record all the things which has been added to the business which has been increased into the business and which has been decreased into the business or deducted from the business you have to keep this in your view while passing each and every transaction now let's move forward now number second purchase goods for $500000 now these goods are being purchased on account and we have learned while discussing about the elements in lecture 1 and the basic concepts so you can visit that video as well and in that video we discussed that merchandise if purchased shall be recorded by the title of purchases and the other assets shall be recorded by their name 
So if you're purchasing the goods or merchandise, then you have learned before that purchases is an expense. And expense, if increased, it will be debited. I am discussing about the expenses of the company. And you, being an accountant of the company, is recording the expenses of the company. So expenses, if increased, shall be debited. And when you're purchasing the goods on account, so that means that you will pay it in the future and you have the liability to pay it in the future. So liability of the company is being increased by this purchase. So it will increase the liability and increase in liability is recorded on credit side. So account payable credit by $500,000. Sold goods on account $100,000. Here, account receivable shall be debited by $100,000 and sales shall be credited by $100,000. Here, account receivable means the money earned but not yet received. It is an asset. And this money is being increased into the business. Therefore, it shall be debited by $100,000. And sales is a revenue and the revenue income is being increased into the business therefore increase in revenue shall be credited cash invested by owner in business three million dollars now as you have learned before the start of the entries that you are accountant of business therefore you have to keep in view that cash is invested by owner and it is being brought into the business therefore cash as an asset is being brought into the business and it is being increased in the business therefore cash shall be debited and capital is a title used for the investment or contribution made by the owner therefore it shall be written on the credit side sold goods for cash thirty thousand dollars cash is an asset and it is being increased by sale of goods therefore it shall be written on the debit side by thirty thousand dollars and sales is a revenue and it in it is being increased income is being increased therefore Increase in revenue shall be written on the credit side. Purchased goods for cash $10,000. Purchase shall be debited $10,000 and cash shall be credited by $10,000. As we know that purchase is an expense, therefore, increase in expense shall be written on the debit side and cash is an asset. Therefore, it shall be written on the credit side because it is being deducted or decreased. Paid expense by check $15,000. Here I am assuming that this expense is a general expense like you can place salary expense, rent expense, utility expense, any sort of expense here. Therefore, expense when paid is being increased and it shall be written on the debit side by fifteen thousand dollars and the cash laying at bank when it is paid by check it will deduct reduce that cash so we use the title of bank for those money which is laying at the bank and that money is being reduced therefore it shall be credited Paid rent in advance $30,000. As we have discussed in lecture 1 basic concepts of accounting and in assets definition we have discussed that every prepayment, every advance payment is an asset for the entity. Therefore prepaid rent being an asset 
it is being increased. Therefore, it shall be debited by $30,000. And cash and asset being decreased shall be credited by $30,000. Paid salaries for cash $20,000. Salary expense is in expense and is, it is being increased. Therefore, increase in expense shall be debited by $20,000. And cash is being decreased as it is being paid. Therefore, it shall be credited by $20,000. Sold goods on account $100,000. Here, account receivable or debtor's account is an asset. Therefore, when it is being sold on account so you have earned the money rather you have received it or not but you have earned it now you own it and it is your asset so account receivable or debtors account shall be debited by one hundred thousand dollars and sales shall be credited by one hundred thousand dollars as sales is an income and income is being increased so increase in income shall be written on credit side cash received from debtors sixty thousand dollars here the cash is being received from the debtors and it has been brought into the company therefore increase in cash and asset shall be debited and account receivable debtors is an asset as we have learned before that this is the amount of money which you have earned but not yet received therefore this asset as we have received it from the debtors so we will deduct the debtors account and asset being deducted being decreased shall be credited by sixty thousand dollars received commission income in advance twenty five thousand dollars cash now here cash is an asset and when it is being received it shall be written on the debit side as the asset is being increased unearned income or the income which has been received but not yet earned in first lecture we discussed that it is a liability because you haven't provided the services yet against it therefore when you receive an income in advance it shall be a liability for you therefore it is being increased and shall be written on the credit side cash paid to creditors suppliers twenty three thousand dollars here accounts payable or creditors are the same and it is a liability when you purchase the goods from the creditor on account or if you received any of the loan from the creditor so it created a liability now you're paying that creditor a supplier so your liability is being decreased and liability when decreased it is debited therefore we will debit the accounts payable or credit creditors account by twenty three thousand dollars cash is an asset and it is being paid therefore decrease or decline in the cash shall be credited by twenty three thousand dollars deposited fifty thousand in bank bank and asset being increased shall be debited by fifty thousand dollars and cash and asset being reduced from the company therefore it shall be credited by fifty thousand dollars sold furniture and received check of thirty five thousand dollars cash and asset being increased shall be debited by thirty five thousand dollars furniture and asset being decreased shall be credited by thirty five thousand dollars it is important to bring into notice that check received shall be assumed as cash until deposited into the bank therefore we shall debit the cash instead of bank compound entry compound entry means the entry in which more than one title of accounts are involved either on the debit side or on the credit side or on both sides do remember one thing 
that this statement is going to help you while passing the compound entries that both debit and credit sides of the transaction shall always be equal in respect of money no matter how many elements are involved there can be more than one element on the debit side and on the credit side but that transaction shall always be equal on debit and credit in respect of amount owner invested cash $43,000 and merchandise worth $10,000 here cash is being increased and shall be debited by $43,000 merchandise is being brought into the business and therefore an asset is being increased in the form of merchandise therefore it shall be debited as well by $10,000 and capital is a title used for the investment of the owner therefore the capital is being increased and shall be written on the credit side by $53,000 now you can see that both debit and credit sides are equal in respect of money sold goods for cash $40,000 and on account $12,000 cash and asset being increased shall be debited by $40,000 and account receivable a debtor account is an asset as well therefore when you're selling it your debtor's account is being increased so the debtor account being an asset shall be debited then sales or revenue income is being increased therefore increase in revenue shall be credited by 40,000 cash and on account 12,000 total $52,000 in this entry we can see that both debit and credit are equal in respect of amount as well purchased merchandise for cash $60,000 and on account $30,000 here purchasing is an expense therefore the expense is being increased one by cash and the other one on account so the purchases as an expense shall be debited by ninety thousand dollars and the cash is being paid against that purchases so cash and asset being decreased shall be credited by sixty thousand dollars then accounts payable creditor account a liability being increased that you have to pay the money into the future so liability being increased shall be credited by thirty thousand dollars now both sides debit and credit are equal in respect of amount by ninety thousand dollars so the lecture ends here we will see you in the next lectures till then if you find any of the difficulty regarding the video regarding any of the entry you can put your uh, question into the command section and the question shall be answered accordingly in the next videos